guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Heather and you are watching Goo Review. In today's video, we are going to be talking about palettes. I have a lot of them. Um, I, this isn't going to be a declutter video. I'm not going to get rid of any of these. Uh, you would have to pry these out of my cold, dead hands to get them. Um, I've worked really, really hard throughout the years to get these palettes. I've had to save a lot of money. I've purchased all these palettes on my own. Um, I actually have a Morphe palette on the way to me right now uh, that I plan on doing a separate review on sometime in the fall after I've tried it out for a while. I'm not going to tell you guys which one I got, but I'm really, really excited. I've never tried any Morphe products before. But um, we're going to go ahead and get started in this video, and we're just going to talk briefly about each and every palette, and if there's any palette that you specifically want me to do an in-depth review or even do like a full swatch video on, leave that in the comment section down below, and I'll be happy to, you know, touch on any of these individually for in-depth reviews. I have no idea which ones we're going to talk about first. I know there's some of these that um, I've got multiples of. You know, like I've got two from Lorac. Uh, so let's see here. Let's get situated. Um, okay, let's talk about this one because this is the most affordable one. This is probably one of the best matte eyeshadow palettes that I've gotten from the drugstore. This is e.l.f. This is their Mad for Matte palette. You get... 0.49 ounces of product. I paid $10 for this and inside you do get a pretty good mirror. They're mostly warm tone mattes. So you got a mirror, sorry I'm blinding you. But you mostly get mattes in this palette. Well they're all mattes but they're mostly warm tones and the pigmentation on these are really good. They're very easy to blend out. Um, this is, you know, you can make a complete look out of this. This is great for every single day. Or you can pair it with, you know, something that's an all shimmer palette. Or you can pair it with, you know, some of your other palettes that have more shimmers than mattes. Things like that. But we'll go ahead and swatch. I'm planning on doing like two to three swatches out of every palette. Just so you guys can kind of see. As you can see, that's got really good pigmentation, and these are really easy to blend out. The quality on these for just being $10 is really impressive, in my opinion. And I know e.l.f. is actually getting ready to come out with more palettes. In this, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. You get 10 shades, so that's essentially you're paying a dollar per shadow when you break down the cost point. Um, like I said, they're coming out with more palettes that are similar to something like this. I don't think they've launched yet, but I know they're getting ready to launch. You should check it out on their website. This eyeshadow palette, I do believe, is vegan. If it's not, then it's because it has carmine as one of the pigment ingredients. But all of e.l.f.'s products are cruelty-free, which is really nice, and I love that. And again, it's super affordable and really good for the price. Another all-matte palette that I have is the... A <laughs> Urban Decay Naked Basics 2. Now, I'm kind of weird. I go through phases where in the summertime I prefer more warm tones because I have really neutral colored hair, really neutral blonde. So I can either wear all warm tones or I can wear all cool tones. Now, for the summer, I, like I said, I like to stick to golden warm tones. But now we're starting to get into kind of fall and winter. So when we get into winter, I'll be mostly cool toned. And then in the fall, I like to stay more neutral or I'll go cool or warm, like, you know, I'll mostly stay neutral, basically. So, this is great for me in the winter time. I do love this palette because it is all mattes. I love to travel with this palette. I love to throw it in my purse if I have to go somewhere overnight and, you know, just need a quick touch up on my makeup or something like that. You get a really nice mirror in this as well. And then you get six eyeshadows, and these are all cool tone, and you have a very complete look in this. This is more of a satin finish. It's almost got like a sheen to it, so this would work as like a nice subtle highlight. Yeah, it's just got a really nice sheen to it. Super pigmented, very, very soft and buttery to the touch. I love Urban Decay eyeshadows. Um, this shade is really good for in the crease as a transition. 
you know, if you, you can pair any of these and you'll have a perfect look. This is great for work as well because it's very soft and subtle and you can even smoke it out with this like all matte black which is like super pigmented. And it just blends so beautifully. I absolutely love this palette. Um, it is pretty pricey for six shadows. I do not remember the retail price of this palette just because I've had it for so long. Um, I think I paid $24 for it. So, you know, that's $4 an eyeshadow. Um, so the price point when you break it down is a lot more expensive. So, like I said, you're paying $4 per eyeshadow, six eyeshadows for $24. Um, the next palette we're going to talk about since we're on Urban Decay is this baby. <laughs> this is a cult classic. Everybody has heard of this. Everybody has seen this. Everybody knows about this. This has been all over YouTube. This is like the first major palette that actually went viral on YouTube. If you don't know what this is, then you've been living under a rock. I actually... <laughs> I had been dying to buy this palette, but I did not want to spend $52 on an eyeshadow palette. Um, look, I think it was $52. I have my phone here. I can pull it up here. So I believe you get 12 shades in this. Yeah, you get 12 shades in this. So let's see here. The price point is about $4.33 per shadow. This was actually one of the most amazing Christmas gifts I got for my from my fiancé. He bought this for me as a surprise because he knew I would not purchase it myself. You get an okay-ish mirror in here. It's not all that. Like, you've got a ton of space around it. But it did come with a really nice dual-ended brush that I even use. Like, most of the time when eyeshadow palettes come with a brush or um, those godforsaken spongy things like that are terrible... Um, I, I don't use them. I don't like them. I don't think the quality is very good. What the heck? Uh, so I usually just end up tossing them, but the brush that came with this was actually really, really nice. So I enjoyed that, and I like that it's dual-ended because I can travel with it. It's kind of tricky to store, though, because you don't want to store it standing up in a stand because you can damage the brush. But, I mean, other than that, the quality of these shadows is actually really, really good. Um, I love that they're mostly warm, warm tones. Um, you only get two mattes. I'm sorry, you get three mattes in here. Um, you get the shade Virgin, which also has an appearance here in the Naked Basics as well. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Skimp, not Virgin. But they're very, very similar. Very similar. In fact, I would almost call them the exact same. The finish is very similar, where it's almost that um, satin sheen. It's not so much a metallic. The only shade in here that I'm not super fond of is Sin, which is right here. Sin. It's kind of chunky. Um, I have to use my finger to put it on. I can't really use a brush just because it does have a lot of fallout on it when I do use a brush. Um, I just think it's just one of those shades where it wasn't as finely pressed as the rest of these. But then of course you've got, you know, the iconic half-baked shade right here, this gold shade, which is really pretty. And then you've got this really amazing transition color, Naked, which is perfect. And, you know, just like the Naked Basics too, Super pigmented, super buttery, easy to blend, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful quality. I'm so happy to have this palette in my collection. And surprisingly, the velvet on here, I've had this since December, and the velvet on here does not really get all that dirty. I mean, I thought I would have this covered in eyeshadow by now, but no, it stayed nice, nice and pretty, and I love this palette. This is one of my top three favorite palettes of all time. Uh, let's talk about one that's not so hot. Over Christmas, Too Faced launched two different Christmas-themed limited edition packages, if you will. It was, you know, they had the um, Chocolate Factory and the Merry Macaroons. I think it's called Chocolate Factory. I um, might have to double-check that. But one was exclusive to Ulta and one was exclusive to Sephora. So I went to Sephora and I purchased the one that was exclusive or was it Ulta? Guys, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. 
I think it was Ulta now that I'm thinking about it. So it came with a Better Than Sex Mascara Mini and I think something else. And you also got the eyeshadow palette. And it's the vanilla scented Mary Macaroons Christmas in New York. Now, it's slightly scented. It's kind of a fake vanilla smell. It's really not that great. Um, the packaging, the whole packaging of this was just absolutely like, it sucked me in. It was beautiful packaging. It was amazing. I had a hard time like talking myself into throwing it away because it was just so beautiful. The shadows in here, I honestly feel like are not as good of quality as their, you know, permanent range foundation, like their permanent range uh, eyeshadows and their pigments. The, the something about this formula that is not as good as what's in their permanent range, and I don't know why that is. I think maybe they used a separate or a different uh, manufacturer for these. I don't really quite know. But the, the shadows in here are actually really pretty. Um, I'm actually wearing this shade Champagne Rose all over my eyes today. Um, I do have a base on because these don't really have quite the color payoff as I expected and hoped for. So I did have to use a base. I did have to pack a lot of these on. Um, you get four, eight, 12, 12 shadows in here. I don't remember how much I paid for this. Again, I'm sorry. But um, I do remember it being pretty pricey. And like I said, you know, just for the pigmentation of it, I, one shade in here that I did like was Tiramisu. It's a really nice transition shade, which I'm kind of obsessed with. You're going to hear that a lot in this video, you know. But you see, the color payoff just isn't quite there. They do blend really well, but almost too well, to the point where it's like you put it on and you're blending, and then, it's like, where, where did it go? Where did the eyeshadow go? I can't find it. It's gone. I, I put it on there. Um, and then another one on here... Let's do Honey Lavender. It's this shade right here. Honey Lavender. Again, it's just, it's kind of chunky. You know, and then as you're blending, the payoff just kind of disappears. I mean, it is a pretty shade. You're just going to have to take a little bit more care and extra time working with them. And honestly, I have all these other palettes to where I don't have to do that. So, I don't... I don't use this guy so much. It's nice to have in my collection, you know, just to have it, I guess. But it's just, it's not the best one I have. In fact, this is probably the worst palette I have. And that's not, that's not bad considering, you know, it's, I can work with this. I can, I can make this work. It just takes a little bit more effort. So there's that. Now, the best, the best quality shadow I have. It's also one of the most expensive for what you get. I'm just going to do the math on this real quick before I even tell you guys this. I've mentioned this in a pretty previous video, so yeah. These are $7 per shadow when you break down the price. $7. This is the Viseart Cashmere Palette. I've already talked about this before. You don't get a mirror. But the pigmentation on these. Like, I literally just can't, you guys. This... This was a major splurge for me, um, but it was worth it because I travel with this I, complete look. You've got a setting slash um, brow bone highlight, you've got a transition, you've got a deeper color, and you've got these beautiful shimmers here. We'll swatch this dark gray shimmer, and we'll swatch this matte brown uh, color. Like, can we... Like, the payoff is amazing. Even though they're super pigmented, these are super easy to blend out. And the best part about it is I haven't noticed any fallout with these. Anytime I use them, I don't notice any fallout. So that's always nice because, you you know, you're getting your money's worth. You're not having product go to waste or flying everywhere. Man, this is really starting to get on my nerves. I don't know what's going on with that. Whew. Okay, we've got three more. We're going to talk about one of the palettes that has been all over the country with me. Every time I travel, this thing goes with me. I didn't take it with me to Hawaii, 
but it's been with me to Texas, Virginia, DC, like you name it, it's gone with me. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar, and you've also heard a lot about this. Everybody knows about this. It actually does smell like chocolate. It smells good. You get a pretty decent sized mirror in here too. I just don't want to blind you guys. Um, and it's kind of hard to show you without blinding you. But you get all of these beautiful shades in here. All of these blend like a dream. They're very pigmented. It's one of the easiest palettes to use. Like I, I almost want to call this palette goof proof because you can pretty much, you can get so many looks out of this and if you, you know, you don't even have to be super experienced to get a beautiful blended look out of this. Um, one of my favorite shades in here is Salted Caramel, great for the transition. I really love Cherry Cordial, that's a beautiful fall time shade. It's this really gorgeous like maroon color, beautiful, it's a bad swatch but it's a beautiful color. Um, I really like Black Forest Truffle. I've never tried Candied Violet. In fact, I don't even think I've swatched that before. That's really pretty. Super sparkly. You, you, you know, with something like that, you definitely want to use a glitter glue with. I'm about to cut that piece of hair off. I'll tell you what. Um, Champagne Truffle is stunning. It's one of the larger shades where you can even use it as a highlight. It's just so pretty. This actually champagne truffle, this color here, reminds me, well, let's try it this way. This reminds me of the highlighters they have from Forever 21, or Makeup Forever. What am I talking about? For Makeup Forever. They have a very pretty, like frosty pink shift highlighter that I'm actually wearing today as we talk about it. Uh, that's what that reminds me of. Not as pigmented, but all of these are still beautiful. Very pigmented, super buttery, easy to blend, great palette. Love that. The last two I have are two Lorac palettes. The very first expensive palette that I ever purchased was the Lorac, excuse me, Lorac Pro 2 palette. Now these are mostly cool tone. It did come with a, um, this one came with a mascara, which I didn't like. I hated it. <laughs> I ended up giving that away. But I paid $42 for this and you get two, four, six, eight, I think 16. Yeah, you get 16 shades in here. And for $42, That's about $2.62 and $2 per shadow, which honestly is not that bad of a deal, but I did think I got this on sale. Um, you get a beautiful set of eight mattes and eight shimmers. This palette has been well loved. Like I said, this is the first expensive palette that I ever purchased for myself. Um, I don't know what it was about it, but I was just absolutely drawn to it. Um, I purchased this in December two years ago. Um, the shelf life on these say that this should be expired by now, but honestly, with powders, it's it's difficult to tell. This does not irritate my eyes. There's no weird smell. The pigmentation works just as great. So, you know, as long as it's still working and I don't have any issues with it, I'm still going to use it. I'm not just going to throw it out because it says to throw it out. Now, things like your mascara, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to gamble with that. But powders and things like this, you know, you'll be able to tell when they're expired. And this guy is still going strong. One of my favorite shades in here is Rosé. It's this beautiful rose gold. Like, beautiful. And then I also love the shade Nectar, which is this really nudie pink color that is great for the transition. It's like almost like barely there. It's beautiful. The thing about this palette that I wish I would have known then is that these are so pigmented that you have to be very, very careful because they can be so pigmented that they're difficult to blend. And if you get way too much on your brush, if you don't tap off the excess, you're going to be there for 15 minutes, like blending your life away. So that's one thing you have to be aware of with Lorac shadows is that they are so pigmented that, you, you know, you don't want to use a really light hand like dip, tap, apply. 
Um, and you do want to be pretty precise with your application with these just because, you know, even though you have amazing blending skills per se, maybe your initial application of where you put it to begin with isn't so great. So that's just, you know, one of those things to keep in mind if you're looking into purchasing a Lorac palette is the pigmentation is very much there. There is a little bit of fallout with these. Um, typically when I use Lorac palettes, I like to put my eyeshadow on first and then I'll go in with my base and concealer and the rest of my eye makeup, but or the rest of my face makeup. But other than that, this is just, it's, it's a beautiful palette. You have so many different things. You know, you've got a little bit of pop of color with the navy and the plum shade here. You can do a very neutral look. The way I like to look at this palette is I like to break it up like this into four. So you've got a beautiful highlighting shade, you've got a crease shade, you've got an all over the lid shade, and you've got an inner corner highlight. And then you can do the same thing like this. And then you can do the same thing like this. And you can just keep moving down. And that's how you can figure out different looks in your palettes, is by figuring out, okay, what did the creators have in mind? What kind of looks were they thinking about when they were making this palette? Why did they place these shadows in this order? So that's kind of one way I like to look at it. You can even go as far as to say, okay, you could just do these two colors, oh, these two colors, and have a complete look, honestly. You could take this light brown and this beige, and that's it. Light brown in the crease, beige on the lid, out the door, you're good to go. So that's that's one way to really look at this palette. Or, of course, you could even jump across it. You could do um, cool gray in the crease, navy on the outer corner, and maybe chrome all over the lid. This is such a universal, like, so many things you could do with this palette. You like my imagination just ran wild when I saw this and I had to buy it. And I'm really, really glad I did because I do I do love this palette. Now, my favorite out of these two is the Lorac Pro 3. I actually heard um Tati Westbrook, Glam Life Guru, that's her channel. If you haven't heard of her, then again, you're living under a rock. Everybody knows who Tati is by now. But she had actually received it and was allowed to talk about it before it launched. And she told me the launch, you know, she didn't tell me, but she announced in her video the launch date of it. And as soon as I heard it, I saved it in my phone and I was up all hours of the night waiting for this palette to drop because I wanted it that bad. Um, the Lorac Pro 1 didn't really call to me so much. It, it's mostly warm tones. Now this is neutral. So Pro 1's warm, Pro 2 is cool. This is your straight up, absolutely neutral palette. And that's why I love this palette because I can wear this all year, any season, and I'm obsessed with it. Um, this one came with the eye primer. Didn't like the eye primer. Um, it's same with the other Lorac, you get the mirror with it. The packaging on this is a little bit more stiff. I don't know if it's because it's newer, but this one I can fold this all the way back and not have a problem. This one doesn't really want to go back all the way. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Again, you get the same, it's the same price. You get, you know, the same amount of shades. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Mattes on the top, shimmers on the bottom. As you can see, this palette is very, very well loved. Some of my favorite shades in here is clay. Um, it's actually got a huge like dent in it. It's it, I'm about to hit pan on it, but clay is my favorite transition shade of all time. It's this beautiful neutral brown skin tone, and then the the matte that I really really love. Let's see here. Is light gold. In fact, I love this for an inner corner highlight on just about any look that I do. <laughs> it's so blinding. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's absolutely beautiful. This is one of my favorite palettes of all time, just with the shade selection. A lot of people actually, you know, really hated on this palette. They thought it was really boring. And that's why I love it, because it's... You, you, <laughs> You can do just about anything. It's neutral. Any of these colors that you mix together, you're going to have a beautiful look no matter what. It's not going to look mismatched whatsoever. I could put um, 
clay in my crease with dark brown on the outer corner, amethyst all over the lid, and for a pop of highlight, I could go in with almond pearl, and I've got a but a complete look. Um, really smoky, not an everyday look, but it's complete and it looks, you know, like I put a lot of thought into it, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have to. These are all neutral. They're not going to clash whatsoever. Um, this is great for winter, fall, spring, summer, you name it. It's, it's good. Um, you get a really nice black in here. You get this beautiful, interesting shade called truffle, which it's like a dark gray purple color with like bluish silver sparkle reflex in it. I mean, it's just the weirdest color, but it's beautiful. Um, the only shade in here that I have issues with is this one right here, Medallion. As you can even see it in the pan, it looks pretty chunky, and yes, it is very chunky. This is one of those where I, do, I don't know if I got a dud with this color or what, but you can see on my finger the chunkiness on that. Um, swatching it is not all that, like, you can see it's pretty chunky. This is one of those colors that I actually have to pack on the lid with glitter glue, because once you, like, really press it on there and get rid of that chunkiness, it's a really pretty taupey color. Um, but that's the only shadow that I have issues with. Same thing with the Lorac Pro 2. It's a little bit more difficult to blend because of the pigmentation. The formula on these is the exact same. They're absolutely stunning. I love the packaging on both of these. Very sleek, very flat. Um, if this were to drop, I don't have to worry about my shadows falling to pieces. These are great to travel with just because of the versatility of them and the shades. Beautiful, beautiful, stunning palettes. These, I honestly think, are the most bang for your buck. If you are going to splurge on a pricey palette, I honestly think Lorac Pros are the way to go. I haven't tried any of their Master Pros, the big palettes, but those are great. Um, from swatching, just from swatching, and I've heard really great things about them. But anything from Lorac, their shadows are stunning. So if I were to break this down for you guys, um, and I were to rate the best palette, like my favorite to least favorite, there isn't any of these that I absolutely hate, but I'd have to say my absolute favorite and the most bang for the buck is Rock Pro 3. And then I would probably say my Too Faced Chocolate Bar would be second. Third place would be my Rock Pro 2. Fourth place we're going to go Urban Decay Naked. And I know that sounds strange, but the only reason why I say that is because you only get three mats. And that kind of puts limitations on, you know, your looks. So that would be fourth place. Fifth place, Busy Art. And the reason why this is in fifth pla pay place, even though the formula is, like, the best for the price point, $7, like, this, uh, come on. I mean, you could achieve the same with Lorac. You know, you got to put more effort. This, you know, it's too expensive. And then we're going to do Naked 2 just because it's all mattes. You can get a complete look, but you can't really, you know, jazz it up with any shimmers unless you were to pull out another palette. Then Elf would be next because of the price point. The price point is really good, but again, it's that same issue. There's no shimmers in these. You're kind of limited. You're either going to have to pull out another shadow, a single, or another palette to get any type of shimmer look, but this is still really good. And like I said, just because I'm rating these from best to, I would say not best to worst, but best to like, or my favorite to not so much my favorite, that's what I would call this, because all of these palettes are great. They're great palettes. Um, there's just some that I use more than others. And then the one that's not so hot for me, the one that I don't use very often at all, it even still looks new is the Mary Macaroons palette by Too Faced. Um, so those are all the palettes I have. Like I said, I am expecting a Morphe palette in the mail here soon. Plan on doing a full, tut or not a tutorial, but a full in-depth review and some swatches for that. Um, I do plan on doing a full look with that palette as well so you guys can kind of see what I can come up with that. Um, and yeah, like I said, if there's any of these palettes that you want to see an in-depth review, full swatches, all of that. Comment that down below. Any of these palettes that I showed you today, 
I'd be happy, happy, happy to do that for you because like I said, all of these palettes are great. If you're looking for a good high-end palette or even, you know, an e.l.f. drugstore palette like this, these, you know, I'm very blessed to have purchased palettes that I really, really love and really do get use out of and haven't had any palettes that I dislike so far. Um, if you guys want to see more of these videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can be part of the Goo Crew. Leave me your comments down below. Like this video if you want to see more of them. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!